Ho Sung Choi, Swing Analysis. What's up, guys? It's your favorite Kiwi coach. Let's go do this. All right, guys, so if you guys are new to Mike's OG Academy, we do everything that you guys need to know about golf instruction, whether it be golf course vlogs, golf interviews, golf tips, golf swing analysis videos like this, we do it here. So if you guys haven't already, hit that little rest subscribe button down there, and you guys will be notified every time we drop a video. All right, guys, so we got a very interesting swing analysis for you guys. Ho Sung Choi, as you guys probably know by now, has a little bit of a crazy swing. We're just going to play it through really quickly so you guys can kind of see. And he's got this little move right here, which is just incredible, right? That little flying, spinning, wild, crazy swing, but yet still a professional golfer, right? And plays to a high level of golf. So that leads us into the first part of the analysis. We're going to kind of just dissect his golf swing and really go into what you guys all want to hear about is why he kind of does that spinning move because there is some reasons on why he's doing that. Now, second part of the analysis is going to go into more of if I was his coach, would I change his golf swing, right? Because that's another question I think that pops up in a lot of you guys' minds. Do you change a golf swing like this given his like basically his stature and his career currently, you know how old he is, all that good stuff. So we're just going to go into some basic checklist type items that I go over before I even change someone's golf swing okay so let's get into it so this first video we're gonna see is down the line camera angles a little bit off right so we're not gonna get super in depth with this analysis draw angles and all that good stuff we're just gonna go over a basic idea of kind of what he's doing okay so first things first we can tell where the club face was kind of pointing let's just draw a line so it's pointing somewhere I would say around here right so he's Pins tuck left, bunkers left, waters left, water short, right? He's trying to hit a nice little draw in there, I believe, to get to that. Looks like middle pin or maybe back left pin. From here, uh, body lines looks relatively close relative to that club face, right? Which is good for a draw, right? Because he's trying to shift path to the right and then have his face close to that to hit that nice little baby draw, right? So set up, everything's looking pretty good. Now, let's get into kind of the first um, oddity of this player's swing, and it has to go with the takeaway, okay? So... As he takes the club back, he immediately gets a lot of radial hinge, right? So he gets a lot of this wrist cock motion right here. Now, while he's doing that, if we watch his trill wrist, there's a little bit of pronation there as well, but not excessively, right? That's why he kind of has club head outside of hands. He kind of gets this little look right here. Now, what I call, let's take a look at his trill side elbow. What I call kind of pulling on the lawnmower, right, to start it, he gets this trill side elbow working into internal rotation really really early in the golf swing like literally right at the start of the takeaway and we're going to kind of show you that here and he gets in this position three right so what does that really mean when you get the elbow working into internal rotation really early all that really means is he's probably going to be a little narrow at this point right so look at this if i extend my elbow a lot more width right hands are a little bit further away from me i get that elbow going into that early internal rotation I'm getting a little narrow, right? That's kind of a baseball look right there as well. So is that the end of the world? Some coaches would say yes. I would personally say for him, obviously not, because he's a professional golfer. It depends on kind of what your definition of end of the world is. Is it maybe holding him back from becoming a better player? Possibly. You never know, right? That's something you'd have to experiment with, right? But again, it is something of an oddity compared to what you see with a lot of other players. Now at this position too as well, if we take a look at his knee flex and his trill knee, he's kind of stayed in flexion. He's over at 155, maybe a little bit different if we had camera angles a little bit better, but he obviously has flexion in his knees still, right? He hasn't started to extend. Also kind of a funny thing too, he's staying in kind of LPT or left pelvic tilt at this position. He's kind of just getting a pivot like this. Elbows going this way, club outside of hands, body's getting lower and he's kind of getting this look right here in his takeaway position and position three, which is pretty much where we're at here. Now from here, when we get him to the top of the backswing, he's really not, in terms of arm structure, that bad of a position, right? He has lead arm relatively on shoulder line. Uh, he has maybe, some coaches would not like that elbow flying as much as his is. I'm not really, um, that doesn't bother me. I teach it to some students, don't teach it to everyone. Um, it's kind of relative to the individual type of thing. Uh, the main thing that I look that kind of bothers me for this player would be more so his trill side knee not extending, right? It's still in flexion. And the other thing right here as well, he doesn't have a lot of hip depth, right? So he hasn't gotten his hips to churn back as much. 
Now the reason why that bothers me, whenever I see players don't get a lot of hip depth, they usually over rotate relative to where normal is on the on the downswing, right? So he's going to get a lot of rotation, which may or may not be a bad thing relative to what club or what shot he's trying to hit, right? Cool. So as we take him down, we're going to see something very interesting. Most players and most amateurs, when they're in this position that he's in, would probably get super steep with the club shaft, work the hands way out, and just hit really big pulls or cuts, right? And just weak shots. They're not going to get a lot of ball speed. Their efficiency of strike is not going to be very good, typically, right? But what Hosung Choi does is he actually, as he's rotating, he's really not putting a torque on the club this way and steeping it. He's almost kind of letting the hands be as he rotates, which some famous instructors talk about, and starts to get the club shaft shallowing out as he's churning, which gets him on a flatter plane, you could call it, which basically just means he's not going to be as steep into the golf ball as he would have if he would have kept this motion. He's doing this, basically, right, to help shallow out the club, which is what he, probably the main reason why he's a professional golfer. Cool. So as he gets in this position, most players for at the top of his swing, hands would be way out in front of body and way close to the golf ball. He's actually doing an incredible move to kind of get hands to fall almost behind him in transition while he shouts at the club. And then a split second before impact, which is kind of about this club shot parallel position, we're going to notice something funny. His hands and arms are actually behind his body, which is very, very abnormal for players who have his top of the swing position, right? Now, relative to pro, is not abnormal because a lot of pros are going to do his compensating move because they're professional golfers. That's the reason why, right? So, anyways, he's stuck out at this point, right? This brings us into the most important part of the video, and I think you guys are going to like the most, is why he starts to spin from here, why he starts to extend and spin. Why is he doing that? Well... I would say is because he's trapped. He's stuck here. So his elbow is kind of behind rib cage almost. It's definitely behind the hip line and he's stuck at this position. So most players are going to block it way right from here or they're going to flip it over and they're going to hit a big old snipe hook to the left in the water, right? But what does he do? Well, this is interesting. Let's watch. As he comes into the golf ball, we're going to see immediately he starts extending. And then next click forward, we're going to see that he's rotating, right? Now let's look at his foot here. We're going to see kind of like similar to Cam and Champ, he's starting to shear and spin on that balls of the feet. He's spinning on it. And then he gets the crazy look follow through, which makes me crack up every single time. I, every single time I watch it, it's awesome. How can you not love that? That's pretty awesome. But anyways, the take home point there is the main reason why he has to kind of spin out the way he's doing is because he's stuck in this position. So my guess is when he was a junior golfer, he developed some type of swing. I don't know how much coaching he had, but he developed this swing that was similar to this. Maybe he started hitting, He's maybe he's always had this shallow motion, but before he used to get super stuck and hit blocks and hooks. And then to get rid of that, he started implementing this big spin move somewhere in his career. I don't know his uh, history that well. I haven't really researched him. So if you guys want to fact check me and look at that, I would guess that'd be a very, very accurate um assumption basically of why he's doing this spinning move i mean i know it's why he has to factually wise but why he developed it i would guess that's maybe the main reason but anyways that's what he's doing and he's obviously playing at a very high level of golf because he's a professional golfer cool so now let's uh, shift gears and let's get into the second part of this analysis which is more so would i change his golf swing right so let's go through a checklist of ideas currently right first and most important checklist is we have to develop kind of a why he's playing golf slash goals, right? Macro goal. What is his macro goal, right? Now, if his macro goal relative is to get, let's say, again, I don't know this player very well. Let's say right now he's currently like 700th in the world or something like that. He wants to become a top 10 player. Well, then we're starting to come up with some ideas of like, okay, maybe there's some things we got to change here, right? First things first, let's look at total distance. How far does he hit the driver, right? Because we know if you want to become a top 10 player, doesn't mean you got to be the longest driver, but you got to hit it over a certain yardage. And I'm guessing he doesn't hit it. He probably hits it pretty far for what the move that he's doing. But I'm guaranteeing he probably is losing out on a decent amount of distance due to the way that he's swinging his backswing. He gets kind of short and narrow. And I think if we got him a little bit more hip depth, extending the knees a little bit more, getting a little bit more width at the top, we can get him a little bit more speed and distance, right? Now, keeping that in mind, if we change his top to backswing position, how long? Would it take him to develop the downswing 
and would it completely mess up his career, right? Because there's been players in the past who try to add distance in certain ways that have totally lost their swings, right? Some ideas that I'm constantly thinking about if I was going to change a player's swing, especially professional golfer's swing, because that's a little bit more of a higher pedestal in terms of if you mess his swing up, you mess his swing up and everyone knows type of thing, right? So those are a couple checklist items that I'm thinking about. Another little checklist item that I'm going to think about as well is age, because obviously he's a little bit old. I think he's in his like 40s or late 40s. Do you want to change the player's swing this late in his career? I would, even if he says he wants to be a top 10 player, now I would say, given this player situation, I would have to talk to him and be like, okay, let's get realistic with your goals. Is that a realistic goal as of now? Possibly, maybe we can change some other things in your game besides your swing to help you get to that goal, but is it realistically, when you're in your late 40s, is becoming a top 10 player? realistic, right? There's only been a few players that have done that, right? I know VJ Singh pops up into them in my mind as one of those players that have done that. I think Kenny Perry did it right before he went to the Champions Tour. He became kind of a top 10 player, but very, very, very rare. And at that age, besides VJ Singh being an oddity because he's always changing his swing, um, Kenny, I know Kenny Perry definitely did not change his swing, maybe subtly changed his swing to kind of get to that position. But Anyways, guys, these, those are some of the checklist items I'm thinking in terms of professional golfer. Uh, amateur golfers out there as well, I think for the mass majority of amateur golfers, changing your swing mechanics probably is not going to hurt you, right? So if you guys want to do that, make sure to go to your local PGA Pro, have them create a plan of action for you, and really detail out month by month what you guys are going to be working on in each month, each week, to kind of progress your games. Because I would argue that a lot of amateurs can change their swing right now when you start getting a better 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 now you got to start being really really specific with your goals and is it actually something that you're going to want to change in terms of swing right because again swing is just one facet of the game there's a lot more facets this player can work on maybe you never even know his whole life he's wakes up at 10 minutes before tea time, you know what I mean? Or maybe he's drinking all night before. Maybe that's something you could change first, right? I mean, people people don't think about that. It's They always base it off of mechanics, but sometimes it could be the way this player's living his life, right? Maybe he's at the casinos all night, just get rolls in, kind of like a Walter Hagen style, but just couldn't, you know, gets tired throughout like the third round or something. I don't know. There, there's a lot of different reasons on why a player doesn't play good golf besides swing, right? So there's a whole checklist in terms of that that you should look for, especially the better and better that you get. Like I said earlier, you definitely need to be on point with that checklist or you guys are going to kind of, you might completely lose your games. I've seen it a lot. I've definitely seen it a lot. Cool. All right, guys. So that pretty much is the end of this analysis. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, definitely some really important take on points in terms of if you should change your swing. Also, I think it was just an interesting analysis to kind of see how he was basically doing that kind of rotating jumping move, why he was doing that. I think um, hopefully brought some insight to you guys. Cool. So if you guys haven't already, feel free, hit that little red subscribe button. I did that out of order. Let's re let's go back. Smash that like button. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you guys like these types of videos and future videos you guys would like to see. And as always, hit that little red subscribe button down there. All right, guys, best of luck and play some golf out there. Oh, 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 oh.